Hello. How many folks? How many folks are in the room? Just because I'm I'm remote, so I'm just hearing voices. It's four of us right now, but I think more awesome. people because we just started. So. Oh no, that's great. Yeah. Great. Um. So, um, Lolly, did you want me to kick this off, or did you want to kind of jump in and um, give a little background here? No, no, no. You, you can, you can start. I'll, I'll just share my uh, uh, point uh, if I, if I have some. But you, you can start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, um, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel Romoff, and I work with the OpenJS Foundation, and I am your um, communications um, and public relations support. Um, for all things OpenJS um, and, and Node.js project. Um, I am relatively new to the role. Um, it seems like I've been here, it feel, feels to me like I've been in this role a little bit longer um, than I actually have. I just think that's kind of the nature of the project. Everything kind of moves pretty quickly. Um, I've been with the Linux Foundation since um, November of last year and I took over for um, Zibby Keaton who kind of had some of this stuff in motion uh, prior to uh, me coming on board. Um, and really the purpose of today's uh, conversation, and that's really how I, I kind of hope this goes, is to get some feedback on um, how things are running with the Node.js collection and how things are going with social media. Um, specifically the, the Node.js handle and uh, the Facebook and the LinkedIn, but I think, um, I think we do get a lot of traction on Twitter. So, um, so not only how things are going, but also, you know, how can, we get, how can we improve and what programs can we put in place and what processes can we put in place that, um, that just includes more, more relevant content um, a, a more diverse uh, group of people, um, you know, and how we can just get some of that stuff, uh, just a, a little bit more collaboration on, on both of those topics. Um, so before I kind of dive into the topics here, just that was some background info, um, are there any questions, um, you know, before I dive in? Uh, I think no. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, um, okay, so a little bit about the Node.js collection. Um, it, it is, and I apologize, I'm, I'm not exactly sure who's in the room, so I don't know how much everybody knows about what it is and sort of the purpose of it. So I, I can be pretty brief. And if there are other questions, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, so the, the Node.js collection is a, um, it's our, basically our community blog on Medium. And um, really the, the purpose of that is for people to uh, share technical content, um, tutorials, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, some, of the, some of the things that we are collecting today, some of the things that we want to talk about um, on that blog today are things around the community, uh, best practices and how to, uh, cloud and containers, internet of things, AI, uh, mobile, and node core. Those are some of the things that we kind of um, would like to get um, topics on. Um, let me just find your screen again here, Wally. I was reading off a list there. Um, there it is. And so typically how people publish today. So if, if you wanted to publish something today, uh, we do have a medium email alias where people will email in um, I do get um, pinged directly as well. Um, but typically how it should work is people would hit that medium alias. They would send in either an abstract, so like an idea of something that they want to submit or a fully, a fully fleshed out post. Um, and then how it should work is, is this group of, of medium participants and editors would read it and kind of, you know, say, as a group house working today, and I think this could, this is kind of part of where we can improve. Um, we kind of say yay or nay, and it, you know, some folks are a little bit more available. So, you know, we'll get, um, so not everybody's necessarily voting on it, but it's, you know, we're kind of, if I get the all clear, then I can work with the, um, the contributor to publish. 
um, it's a very, it's a pretty manual process insofar as, um, you know, we're copy and pasting um, from documents that they have into a Word document, and then we're, you know, putting it on the the blog with, you know, it's, it's kind of bylined under the Node.js Foundation um, versus maybe bylined under them. With it, it, we we obviously attribute it, um, but there's some things we can do to to maybe streamline that process. Um, how, so I'm just going to move on to the next bullet point here. If there are no questions about sort of that review process, because it's, it's there's not. I guess my point is there's not much structure around the review process. Um, so after that, we so how much time sh is, is this? Is this how much time should it take to publish, or what's what's this trying to address here, Wally? Um, the second bullet. Oh, so it's like um, how much. Um... How much time we should um, like? How many time do we publish in a in a in a week? Oh, or... oh yeah. So yeah. So um, you know, it's it's really as we're we're not getting a ton of content today. So um, you know, as for, as far as like a like a best practices standpoint, I would say a couple times a week would be great. Um, just to kind of keep you know, just kind of keep the content fresh and to keep people coming to read um, our, our things. Um, you know, the, the thing about this is we can time it out. You know, they, just because we get something on a given day doesn't mean like we have to get it out um, that day. Um, and depending on what it is, it doesn't necessarily have to go out that week if it's more evergreen content. Um, so, you know, I, I think we could get much better at um, using an editorial calendar and get these things um, scheduled out in advance. And, um, you know, so, it's, you know, as far as the best practice around, you know, how, how often we should be publishing, I would say a couple times a week would be great, um, if, not, if not more. I think where we run into, into problems is when we um, post, you know, a ton of stuff on one given day close together. Um, so even if we've got a couple of things going out on the same day, um, that's okay too. We just have to be mindful of the timing of it. Um, so how to become a reviewer and how to leave. So today folks would just email that uh, medium um, alias and I can, I can find it and drop it in the, the chat here too, if that's helpful. Um, and essentially what, 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 what we're doing is people are requesting to requesting to become an editor um, and hold on just one second. I'm just grabbing that email address because I keep referencing it and it would be helpful to give it in there. Okay. So um, yeah, so essentially just, just request to, uh, to become one and we're, we're, we are looking for technical um, folks to come and help us review. Um, at this point, we, I, I, we don't have a, a, process to to leave but that is probably something that we should address um, because there's probably some folks who maybe their jobs have changed or uh, you know for whatever reason it's just not something that they're able to do right now and so um, just so that we kind of I'm sorry did I did someone did someone talking no no no, no. You, you're just okay sorry. yeah and please um, again I'm, I'm on the phone so I'm just kind of talking through some things. If you need me to stop and you've got questions, just interrupt me. Um, I will not take offense to it. Um, let me see here. So should we have a Trello board or something? I mean, let's kind of, let's talk about that. Let's, I, I, I think maybe there is another way to, to project manage this a little bit more, um, a little bit more in a streamlined way. Um, I think that's a, a huge, you know, a huge uh, question and a, you know, a, something that we could probably improve upon because um, at, at this point, it's kind of just, you know, things, like things are coming in through um, that email alias. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, it's one of those things where it could be a single point of, of failure if, you know, if it's not maybe documented somewhere else outside of that email. Um, so are there any thoughts around 
you know, having a Trello board or even just, um, I know, I know at one point there was a content calendar. Maybe we could re, you know, revive that. Yeah, does anyone have an uh, idea about such this, like a process for the for a blog post to manage through the review process? Uh, GitHub has, um, you know, Trello boards on it now. Um, yeah. is, there, okay. is there, are you guys talking about trying to schedule posts specifically or just how to get them into the pipeline? Because I, I would assume that they would be, I'm John Church, by the way, I'm, I'm, that's who you're hey, speaking, John. speaking. Hi. Um, and uh, I, I would expect it to be like, you know, somebody submits a pull request to a repository the way that the most of the committees work and whatnot. And then that can be reviewed and marked down there um, and other people could weigh in on it, et cetera. Is there a reason why um, that's not the way you guys are working currently or, or am I missing something on that, I guess? So the one point of not using GitHub is that we, we share ultimately on Medium because mm -hmm. our like, collection is on Medium. So then getting posts from GitHub to Medium. To get could formatted. A, or... Yeah, so yeah, that can uh, trouble the, because yeah, GitHub supports the default, uh, you know, the, the markdown mm -hmm. format and uh, for GitHub, uh, for the Medium, it can get a bit tricky. Yeah. So yeah, so, we need to figure out like one platform where we can settle down and then move. Yeah, yeah you just Rachel, go on, please. Another reason could be is uh, blogs could be published elsewhere and we are just um, by the nature and by the quality or by the relevance of it we are just reposting it in the medium mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah so medium does have a, like a we, we don't we don't fully utilize it today but medium does have a way for people to submit drafts um for review um you have to request to become a writer um, and then that's kind of, and then you can kind of go through uh, mediums process. Um, I am a big fan of doing it this way because it kind of promotes repeat contributors uh, because you know once they are a writer, uh, they can continue to be a writer and any time something you know um, something they write something interesting, they can submit it. And then every editor of our medium, uh, publication has access to all of those drafts. Um, so really it would then turn into more of a um, versus it would be more of a ensuring that our editors are either, you know, either we're assigning them or, um, you know, basically that things are just sitting in the medium queue. Um, so there is kind of a, there is a more automated way to, to use you know, to use the, the tools that we, you know, we kind of have in place today. Um, and I've done it a few times with, with, some, of, with some of the folks, and it, it works out really well. Um, I think where some of the process, uh, where, we, where we would need to maybe put some more process in place is around assigning editors and recruiting editors. Um, but so, I mean, that, that, that's an option as well. Um, it, I don't know if we've got, but there's sort of more, because I see that we took some notes around, you know, using GitHub, which I think is also a good idea, um, just because I know that a lot of folks here <laughs> use it. So uh, use the tools that we're already using. Um, I'm going to sell, I'm going to be, I'm going to admit to the, to the group here, I'm not a GitHub pro. Um, again, I've just started using it since joining the Linux Foundation. Um, that doesn't mean I can't learn. Oh, yeah, that's so. also yeah, one problem because not everyone is familiar, familiar with the GitHub and everything. They don't like, yeah, maybe someone does it, write up some, some thing or like some technical blog or some, some uh, node related stuff, but they don't know how to like uh, submit it to the uh, open a PR or follow through with the details and updates. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, um, the Kanban or Trello style board I was talking about um, on GitHub, those are through, I believe, issues or they can be, they can be pull requests or issues. So you won't have, you wouldn't have to commit code, but it, it's, it's a moot point, really. I mean, it, if you guys are just trying to get a board for that yeah. way, everybody can see what's going on. It can be Trello, it can be whatever people are comfortable with. That's fine. Um, one question I have is right now, um, 
so I, I work for a company that we do um, we, we do training and we we have a site called heyno.com and we create <coughs> written and video content teaching people how to program in node.js so this could be something that I could potentially you know help and help volunteer with um, I'd be interested mm -hmm. in that with you guys you know looking at what that looks like but um, I do also like the idea of the medium um, like with that people can you know people can request to be a, a, an editor or writer, not an editor, but a writer on the medium publication and they can um, submit their own things that are published there so they could make it look how they want and then submit it. Um, that would maybe make the flow for like getting, uh, putting out a call for submissions might be easier. But then I'm curious about how, then you need somebody in place who decides what gets published and what doesn't. Yeah. Because if Node.js foundation or if, you know, if, if Node says, Hey, please submit your your posts. There's a really high. There's a good chance that you'll get submissions, and they might not be high quality. So then you need to have some kind of standard in place of, um, you know, who decides what gets posted. Basically, I don't. I don't exactly. know how that. Works. I don't know how that works, or if you guys have clarity on that right now. Um, right now, it seems like the bar to even submitting stuff to you is kind of self-selecting. For you know, you get a much lower rate of submissions, etc. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't have answers for that, but I, uh, I was curious if you guys have decided about like, you know, how would you, what's the bar for what gets published on that uh, publication? Uh, on the other hand, Michael Sniss, do you have any complaints coming about the quality of the publications? I mean, what is the motivation behind looking at improving the review process? So, so the, I, I think the question there is, have, have I gotten any um, complaints about quality? Um, and I, I have not. However, I typically get, since I'm, again, um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a software developer, so I'm not, I'm not super technical when it comes to that. Um, so I have been working with, um, you know, the technical members of the review committee to, to make sure that it's, good content and until you know and that's that's kind of goes to this next point about um you know more technical reviewers because that can be a time intensive process right um reviewing this stuff making sure that it's technically sound um it can take time and so um typically you know what i'll what i'll do is i'll get either get um you know someone will submit something and it's a trusted source or um, I'll go back to that medium email alias and say, you know, hey folks, I would like to get back to this person, uh, you know, in uh, you know, a week's time. Can somebody just take a look and, you know, let me know if this is, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and that's typically how it works. I think we could probably, um, I think we could probably improve on that process as far as one, getting more technical reviewers to kind of share the uh, share that workload and also um, totally open to giving those folks credit um, because I understand that this stuff takes time. So whether that's, you know, in a footnote or, um, you know, a thank you at the bottom, whatever it may be, um, but just really kind of increasing that pool so that, you know, um, I think it was John, is that your name? Yep. Sorry. Okay. To John's point, like when we put, you know, if we were to put out some sort of call for, um, you know, call for submission, we probably will get a lot. And um, and I want to make sure that this thing can scale. So it's, you know, when people are submitting, they get a timely answer whether or not we're going to, you know, accept their um, submission. Um, and, you know, it could be we accept it. It could be we decline it and give them reasons. I mean, those are kind of things that need to be fleshed out as well. Um, now, there have been a couple of times where some things needed to be updated and so you know we just kind of went back to the to the writer and said could you you know clarify one or two of these things and then they resubmit and um you know that gets published but content you know takes time and content is an investment and so we would need you know obviously we would need quality content but we would also need um you know the experts on the editing or yeah, on the review side to ensure that we are putting out meaningful and helpful stuff from the community so that's what you know that's uh, yeah. did, I, did, I, did I answer that question 
Yeah, Rachel, uh, I, hi, Rachel. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you? I can. Oh, okay. So can you can hear me? I'm loud enough. Hi, my name is Erin. And so I've come in a little bit late to this discussion. And I have a question, which is why? So I think that we all agree that there needs to be more high quality content about Node. And so is there a target user that we are looking for to read this material? Because someone just new to Node needs a different set of content than someone who is in the middle of their Node career or someone who wants to become a core contributor. So yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, exactly. That's uh, one of the points we want to discuss and highlight that what kind of content we want on the our publication. It, we can drive like three or four type of channels, one for like export Words. One is for the beginners where we post regularly on there should be like a topic for the beginners every week or every twice a week and then there should be a topic for intermediate one and there should be topic about right. like getting the reviews and but then also, they, yeah yeah how do we know if this is successful do we have traffic goals no. uh, is there a conversion goal is there a sign up for a newsletter goal I think without a goal we won't even, and the goal can be like a purely quantitative goal of like, we want to publish X amount of articles in the Y time period. But without a goal set out, it'll be really hard to decide whether it's worth the effort that we want to put into it and to get people on board because they won't be able to go back and say, I feel good because I helped get to this milestone. And then the last thing I want to ask, and sorry to ask so many annoying questions, <laughs> uh, I actually used to run a small magazine. I used to work in publishing. So like these are the annoying questions that people in publishing ask. Um, there's already a large community of people who volunteer to judge content for the various Node and JavaScript conferences. Hmm. What about using the conference presenters as a pipeline? Because if you're presenting a 20 minute talk, turning that talk into a blog post is not all that much more effort sometimes. And so saying, hey, your talk got accepted at, you know, an attractive. Let me connect you to the blog people. And so that's one way of vetting if they've already been accepted to the conference. Can we encourage them to write a blog post for people who don't like to watch videos? Sometimes the videos aren't very high quality or there's a glitch. And it's a different way to reach people that's not tied in. Um, and yeah. people who have already signed up to review. Yeah. And they, they passed some sort of filter. Yep. Which mm -hmm. I, I, I like that idea, at least because there's efficiencies there and it removes some work and removes people from the process, et cetera. So, another, or at least reusing content is a great idea. And another thing to do, like, which you can steal from the world of academic publishing, is just to be like, August is streams month, right? Mm -hmm. And have put a CFP out like far in advance, so like three months in advance. So you have an editorial calendar that's about, we want intro content, we want intermediate content, and we want like how to help content on all these topics. That's a wonderful and then just have a call for papers. That's a wonderful the idea. Same way as you have a I love, I love that. I love both of your, those last two suggestions. Wow, like those will, I will copy, we will copy and paste those into our proposal to kind of improve this. Those are wonder, those are awesome. Thank you. Um, I do have a question just not to, not to, not to answer a question with a question, but for the, um, you said, uh, you know, for, for things that are vetted um, already through like conferences, um, are you talking specific for like obviously we have the, the, the interactive conference in December. Are you talking about that or are you saying like there are, I mean obviously there are other conferences, but are you saying to kind of do outreach to speakers at those conferences and, and, and fill the pipeline that way as well? Right. You could start it with the conference that you have the closest connection to, right? Interactive. Right. But right. You also let's look at the look at the calendar of you know javascript across the year reach out to the organizers and say hey we would love to feature your three keynote speakers on the blog if they want to write a six to eight hundred word piece about 
why they think yeah. this is important and why everyone should know about it. And then you get a twofer, where you get, like, uh, the last time I gave a talk at uh, Node Interactive, it was about all the array methods, because I love arrays, mm. right? Here's all the things you could do with arrays. And I never turned that into a blog post because it was a Jupyter notebook that you could play with. Mm. Um, but if I were going to do like another blog post about here are all the stupid ways to log things, right? Then if I was going to do that talk, if I got the blog post out either around the same time or just a little bit before the talk, it helps me write the talk because you can turn the outline for the blog post into the talk. And then it's promo for the conference. Right? And so right. I write that blog post, I'd be like, here are, the, here are the three main things you should know about arrays, or here are the five gotchas when using array methods in JavaScript. To hear more about this, come to this conference and hear the talk. Yeah, yeah but uh, one point I want to raise with that, but if, if you are already a speaker on talk, you can get the, you get the viewer's attention, you get the word out. But like if, if you are new into blogging, you don't get a chance to uh, speak at a conference that totally. does not stop you from sending a blog post or making a, your first contribution things like so we, yeah, we can, we can filter out, we can take always that that would be the best scenario, but we should be always be open for the newcomers who maybe who don't have a talk or conference, but the post itself is uh, a nice and the quality of the content is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think mentorship works really well for this because yeah. it helps with the quality bar. Yeah. Because usually, if you're new to both writing and coding, mm. you need some help translating what's in your head onto the page. Um, um, I'm wondering, like, I know there's some various node mentorship efforts going on now. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's worth thinking about how to do node mentoring for blog and technical writing as well. Yeah. I want to put something out there real quick that I, some thoughts that I wrote down while I was um, listening to all that. And what I was hearing from, from you and I, I loved, I loved your suggestions specifically. One of the things, some of the things I heard from it was reusing content is great. Cause if the speakers already invested time, they have something to talk about. And what, what you said about, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Valid. Yeah. yeah, what Belit said about um, not setting the bar, being more equitable and being able to signal boost new people. Mm. So that, that made my mind start thinking about like, one very important thing is whose mouth is this content coming out of? Who, because there's, we're going to have to review the content regardless, but it, 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 it depends on where we set that bar. And part of it is the messaging around the actual content itself in terms of, is this coming from, is this the Node.js, you know, folks boosting user created content or is this Node.js stamp of approval, this is a good idea. And that last one, the bar is so high on that, that I'm very lazy and I want to figure out ways to, you know, like that there's so much effort and quality that goes into verifying that. And I don't think any one person can decide, you know, what, what Node.js would stamp with an approval. But specifically on Medium and specifically with collections, um, the workflow and what the pipeline and what people are used to is typically collections are ways to boost other authors. And if you submit as a Medium user, it gets posted onto the publication with your name as the author. Yeah. And so it's very clear who wrote that content and who says it and whose voice it's coming from. And the collection is just coll collecting it. And so I really, really like the idea of putting out a theme because that's minimal effort for the, you know, we can decide those a whole year in advance. And then you can put out the, the um, you can give the opportunity to any developer, any new developer of, hey, write something about this. And then, you know, we'll still have that bar of technical review, which we, which, you know, people can help with, but we'll set it much lower because it's no longer saying this is a Node.js stamp of approval thing, but it's saying, here's people from the huge community we have and here's us signal boosting and using their content, not using it, but giving it a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. So then the work that is involved is more aligned with being that gatekeeper, but setting that bar as low as possible with, not as low as possible, but as low as is useful and is something we can all stomach, while saying, 
hey, we don't necessarily endorse all of this content. You know, like we haven't vetted all of it. We've technically reviewed it and we're, it's good enough to get up there. But, you know, this is someone else's, this, rep, this is not coming directly from the mouth of Node.js. So don't, don't put this in a production and, and sue us over it or whatever. Right. Have they changed the thing on Medium where your, your post on Medium can only be in one collection at a time? They haven't. So what you would have to do is start a new post, but that's, that's a really good uh, observation. I like the idea of having tiers of content. So, right, there's content produced by people from the foundation. There's content produced from events related to the foundation. There's content on these themes. And then you can even go one step below that and have link roundups. Yeah, yeah link roundups, yeah. And then that's a nice way to, like, Say somebody puts a lot of time and effort into something and it's yep. good, but it's not quite at the level. You can say, hey, if it were shorter or if it had more examples or, you know, if it were written against no 12 instead of no 10, we would have accepted it, but we'll put it in the link for yeah. And uh, I've just looked at the collection and I saw a lot of stuff posted by Rising Stack. And it looks like yeah, they have a huge content marketing arm. It looks yeah. I, I didn't look directly at their content too much, but it looks like they're doing link roundups already. So that's one thing potentially taken care of too. I'm basically you know I I want to volunteer my time to help you guys in the way that I can um, to to do something like this because it's 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 within the the it's my organization my the company I work for we have some some experience doing this stuff, mm -hmm. but also I'm looking at it in terms of um, how can we mo how can we best leverage the community around Node.js to do as little work as possible, but still give the most value to people out there. And also like, it's thrilling for a new developer to get their content posted on the, you know, the Node.js yeah. collection. Yep. And so we could even honing in on that specifically for now, or, you know, I'm, this is just my opinion, obviously, but I feel like that would be the lowest effort, quickest way to value for both the foundation or for Node.js and also for the users. Because if you just get that one person to do the technical review and say that none of this is abjectly gaming our system or whatever, so here we go, you know, if you can get people to submit it through Medium, and yes, they would have to create their another, pub, another post, but that's the way it works with every collection on Medium. Um, and it kind of helps streamline that process in my mind. So I feel like that would be something that one or two people could own pretty well. Um, and then, you know, as long as one of those people being maybe a technical reviewer or at least getting some people to cycle in through that role, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I, that, that sounds better to me specifically than trying to set that bar too high. Or if, if, a, if a, the thing about the conference speakers, um, I don't think that a lot of the conferences are affiliated with Node.js in any way. I'm not actually sure how many are. Um, so it would be kind of difficult to even use that as a bar of quality specifically yeah. because how to, at what point do you draw a line of yeah. what's, you know, who's a good speaker, who's not. So, oh, go ahead. So I wanted to surface a bit of experience from getting people to submit talks to a theme. Uh, if, if this is going to be pursued, I really think it should be because like themed editions would be great, but it needs a fair amount of lead time because making sure you get enough stuff to fill an edition that is themed means that you're only able to accept for each edition a subset of mm. what's available to you. It's a really good observation. So you'll need to make an editorial calendar for, say, a year in advance, but have it start, say, a couple of months in the future to have enough time to accumulate. But, but it's a great idea, and it really should be done. And I surfaced one particular publication as a great example of how of, of themed editions. Um, Stripe does a publication called Increments, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Like when it comes into my email, it's just nice. <laughs> I click into it, and it's just, yeah, um, it's great. Uh, and it's also very minimal branding. You can't tell Stripe. Hmm. So yeah, um, uh, so I'll, I'll just um, go with a uh, with few other uh, topics we have to cover. Is uh, One of the points is to how to get uh, writers to review in return or maybe how to incentivize them for the in the review process because if there is some incentive kind of then you get you can get easily more more reviewers sure oh so, uh, yeah so uh, any thoughts anyone have about uh, about badges and stickers man badges yeah. and stickers <laughs> yeah um 
Yeah, and also maybe uh, reaching out to technical writing communities like Write the Docs because they may not they may not be daily node developers or JavaScript developers, but they have experience reviewing technical content. Yeah. And like, there's a big theme, like John was at Write the Docs 2 last week at Portland, there was a big theme about how to become more involved. Which one would you say? Oh, oh, the conference is called Write the Docs. Write right the Docs. Huh? And there's one in Portland, and there's one in Prague, and there's one in Vilnius this year. Oh, wow. And that's thinking about doing an East Coast one. It's a very, and there's also API the Docs. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's uh, Write the Docs also in Australia. Yeah. Uh, they're doing, yeah, they're kind of everywhere now. Yeah, they're doing yeah, other docs. It's and, super. Yeah. And so one thing that makes technical reviewers' jobs easier is having a style sheet and a style guide. Because one of the things that's a pain about reviewing technical content is like Google style guide is that open source is always two words and it never has a hyphen. Yeah. And if you learn some other style, then you you're always trying to check it in mm -hmm. your mind. So every time that something is reviewed, you also want to incentivize the reviewer to add something to the style guide. Like, I have decided that when we talk about this, it's capitalized this way. Yeah. Or we link to this source when we talk about that. Manuel? Uh, it was related to incentivizing. Um, so it's not that I'm trying to change the topic. I'm kind of talking about the core of the brand that we're on. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rachel, can you hear us clearly? Clearly? Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't. I can. It. Yes. No, no. I can. I can hear you. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm just I'm taking notes. Going to surface an yeah. open issue that's out there right now. Um. For a no just thank you program, uh, for which this would be a like great candidate to yeah. actually have swag for. So. For context, that issue was opened a little while ago to help thank contributors for making commits with Node.js. And Rich already does something to thank contributors. I'm not exactly sure what, but I know <laughs> he does something because people have said that on the issue. But we were thinking about um, giving people swag that their con contributions um, will like entitle them, uh, reward them with. Uh, so we have a store right now that is uh, the Node.js store. The thing is right now there's some, there's some, like shipping is a little expensive and I don't think a lot of people necessarily order from it. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been talking, related to that thank you program, I've been talking with a couple of uh, the folks at Gatsby.js who have a great thank you program. Mm -hmm. um, and they have uh, said that they're willing to share or help us implement their open source code base for their shop. Um, so their shop uses the sh Shopify SDK um, in JavaScript. And it also, they have their own system for using, generating coupon codes that are usable in the shop mm -hmm. uh, based on people logging in with their GitHub handle. Oh, so wow. it can check like their contribution. Right. So they're willing to help us implement it, which saves us a bunch of time. Not to mention we don't have to re-implement any of the stuff that they spent like three, four weeks full time working awesome. on. Yeah. Um, and they're very keen to like actually like share it. They're a good group. They're a great group. Um, and they said uh, like we had a discussion about it. So I don't have hard numbers, but their contributions have gone up, and people actually do use it. Um, and it's their way of just saying thank you. Um, usually people redeem it for a shirt or something. And shipping costs are lower than um, than what they've said. It's lower than what we have so uh -huh. far faced. And if you have themed issues, there's so many design adjacent <laughs> people oh. in JavaScript that they could make, you know, yeah. themes. So, so in the tags, when design. you're logging through GitHub, they detect like how many commits you have made. If you have, if you have made one commit, then the coupon code is like uh, automatically applied. Uh -huh. yeah. Use the GitHub API. Yeah, I just want to um, real quick on on how to incentivize and how to get more technical reviewers. I think it's very tightly related to how to get um, more contributors in general. In that, um, like low barrier to entry, I guess, like or low friction. Put it that way, low friction. Meaning, I want to put a differentiation between technical review and editing, because um, I've published on other collections before, and they didn't edit any of my stuff. They're high volume collections that are just churning, churning, churning stuff out. Yeah. Which as a result, they get a lot of followers and they're more attractive to, you know, I'm not saying that 
y'all should be a high volume thing. But um, when I say technical review, I mean just specifically in terms of like, is this a spam malware like filled article that's garbage or is it, you know, it like, does it meet the bar of this, this person tried their best. Yeah. And if I think that if we frame or if, if it was framed around, Hey, like MVP version, like I said, I'm lazy. I'm imagining how can the fewest number of people make this whole thing work with the largest impact. And I think that specifically having one person do a technical review, which is mostly just read through it. And is, you know, is it garbage or not? Or is it, did they do it? Did they do try their best or not? And frame it around this part of the bulk of the collection is a signal boost to other people. You know, um, that's what comments are for. If it's garbage, people are going to tell them or they're going to try to correct them or do whatever. Obviously, you know, we don't want flame wars, but that's what the review is. We don't want something to get through, which is going to damage that person themselves. And I think that just so putting a differentiation between editing and reviewing it because editing will increase the, the, the style guide is, you know, that's how my company works. That's how every publishing company works and it's how you should do it. But um, I don't think that we really have the resources right now, at least I, not from my perspective on this, to be able to really edit people's stuff. Um, and that increases the lead time. It increases the cycles of everything. So I think that if people can submit it, one person could sit down every week or every two weeks or every month or whatever, or, you know, every week, maybe two, whatever, however many days, and just boom, 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 check and decide. And then they just move things through the pipeline. And then maybe somebody else can decide what actually gets published when or whatever. Um, and maybe the, maybe the MVP version of it is just trying to work out that process to be as smooth and yeah. low friction as possible. And then we can figure, once we have a volume and a following, then we can figure out how to do the theme stuff more specifically. Because like, like Manil brings up a good point, you're, with themes, you know, you're just selecting a subset of what is being published. And it's not that, in, it's not that incentivizing for people if, oh, wow, I submitted that article four months ago and now it finally is getting published because my theme finally came around. So I think that once there is the volume of people submitting and it's that happy feedback cycle happening, then we could probably, y'all could do the, um, the themes or whatever more effectively. I think it's a great idea and I would love to do that. But I think in the meantime, um, it's, a, it's a big process challenge currently. And if one person can really be the reviewer or the gatekeeper who is, you know, they would have to have some kind of technical expertise in Node and want to do this. Hopefully there'll be 10 people doing it, but yeah. you can only really count on there being one person. And if that person, and then assume that person is overwhelmed, you know, that's the way I look at it. But mm -hmm. that's how I think to get more technical reviewers. And that's how I think you could incentivize the reviewers themselves is make the process as painless as possible. Because if you have 18 different reviewers, well, are you really controlling the quality that well? Or is that person favoring other people, et cetera. So fewer reviewers that are closer to the team or closer to all of this, I think is, is best in my opinion. Like maybe there's a small like blog committee or something. Yeah, or no. something like that. That would be great. You can also back your way into themes by setting them for times when you know people are going to be writing about that anyway. Yeah. So for example, uh, Hacktober. Oh, like yeah. Like known projects that are exciting for Hacktober. That's a great idea. And then you know, since we know pretty much when versions are going to go into long-term support, you could have, hey, write about how to upgrade. I, and on that, it's also a hard thing for, for yeah. senior people to do. So. Yeah. And Hacktober specifically, for anybody not familiar, is, you know, a, a big event that happens where people try to, you know, like come together and, hey, during this month, do an open source commit or something. I think that's the way it works. Yeah. But also, there's huge communities that are even bigger than Node.js that we could tap into, like 100 days of code. If you could offer like, hey, this is our MVP version is, or part of it would be like, hey, if you're doing 100 days of code, this is our 100 days of code, you know, track or whatever that we're, yeah. you know, like if you're doing 100 days of code and you're blogging about it anyways, which you are if you're doing 100 days of code and you're doing Node.js, submit it to us and we'll signal boost you and look at you, you know, all this stuff. So I feel like, you know, tapping into where that content's already being created having the processes in place to be able to review it, et cetera. And then at that point, it's 100 days of code. They're newbies, they're learning. And so the bar is a little lower. And then that, I think you can work out your process and get, you know, and then those people are going to share the heck out of it because, you know, <laughs> so whatever. Right. And not media bit, but you can do some nice crossover with like the 10 funniest tweets about JavaScript this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
the, the medium embeds tweets so nicely. Yeah, I wonder how people would submit those or recollect them. But yeah, but that's a cool idea. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. So the next, like, yeah, we 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 got enough. I think uh, uh, not enough, but some uh, feedback for this. The next point could be like, uh, uh, which kind of service do we should we do for our blog post for the content which we want to drive for for like there should be a roadmap similar to like have a special theme for each month, but there could be a roadmap for for uh, for the whole Node.js ecosystem that we want to drive. Like there's a new release coming in, and we want people to adopt it. The new features and new functionality which are we going to provide in a in a year or in few months in the next quarter we can drive the whole community through through the publications and the, what we put on the social media right. so yeah. you know I, you say reader, you get a reader survey this year about how to get input on news topics but i would be super lazy and just go ask peter cooper who runs Node weekly and javascript weekly what topics are the most clicked on yeah i bet he would share that if he thought that it would lead to more content that we could link to. Yeah. Really okay. Nice. And also in the beginning, yeah. if, if you have a high, high ish volume of public of things being published, you can, you know, let it go for a couple of months or something and take a look at, you know, what's driving the most engagement. That's not a perfect heuristic by any means. And also there's a good argument to have, you know, what you asked a very good question, which was Aaron, which was what's the goal? Why, why are y'all doing this? Part of it is to one, um, put better content out there, but two, to also be able to drive eyeballs to important things in the node ecosystem. Um, and so I, you know, having that direction of like, you know, we want to be able to highlight specific things which are important, but also in order to even get that audience, you need to have a, a volume of, you know, you need to have a reason for people to follow the publication to begin with. So. Okay. So yeah, we can, we can now jump on to like specifically social media, like uh, Facebook, Twitter, maybe LinkedIn, uh, what we post there. So, uh, oh, 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 this, yeah, so Rachel, go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, just a little bit of background here. Um, another thing that we are trying to do is just create more collaboration, um, between, uh, you know, the, the, the foundation and the project and the community with social media. Um, one of the things that was proposed at a ComCom meeting several months ago was to have a, um, to sort of have social media chairs. So people from the community that have access to um, our publishing platform, which is Sprout Social, to help, you know, um, you know identify tweets, um, edit tweets, curate tweets, all of those things, and um, just, just, you know, work with engagement, just kind of be a counterpart, um, you know, to, to me on the foundation side and, you know, just to kind of, again, improve content, improve engagement um, from a social media standpoint. Um, the second bullet here is, is talks about the social media chair initiative, but I know that um, a, a hot topic is also just, um, you know, safeguards in place uh, around, you know, code of conduct and things like that. So um, again, this is just another initiative that we're, you know, trying to put some thoughts around um, and put a plan around and to start, you know, executing on, um, you know, just so that, you know, folks have other ways to participate in this community um, that's not just code related. Yeah. So yeah, for, for social media chair, it's uh, I think in, in at the end it's kind of a a, a reviewer or a, what writer does for a blog post. It would be the same person doing the same kind of stuff, but for the social media, not for a blog post. They can they can review, they can filter out, they can point out what what should be highlighted, what should uh, be posted, retweeted, or liked. But uh, yeah, we, we um, uh, any thoughts or any ideas if anyone have about such initiative or any feedback? Well, one, I see, I think a, 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 the simplest question to answer, because there's a lot of hard questions in there, um, I think would be, you know, what platforms would, would be best to focus on? And part of that goes to the why of, you know, why, why are we on those platforms? Why, why does, why would, why would things be posted on those platforms, et cetera? 
um, and you made the point, um, Rachel. Rachel, you made the point, Rachel, that the goal is to create a collaboration between um, the, the Node.js org and the foundation. Um, so I, you know, I, I could see like, you know, coordinating posts like, oh, hey, there's a big announcement with Node.js and the foundation could post that, Node could post that, or things going on with the OpenJS foundation, those could get kind of passed down from, you know, from the org, from the OpenJS to whoever that social media chair might be. But I, I also feel that initially, you know, limiting it to as few, like I'm personally, and this is just my opinion, literally, I don't know if Facebook is a, the right place for that, or if engagement is specifically the, the goal, then it would be, you know, where, where can y'all get the most engagement, et cetera. And um, maybe Twitter is that place. I don't know. But I think limiting that scope to like, what, what platform would you guys want to focus on first? Otherwise, it could just be, here's the messages we want to put out. And then you just schedule them with, you know, Sprout Social or whatever to get blasted to, you know, the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like all of your, have the same message to go out across all channels, which is the, the least customized approach, but definitely the most hands-off, like autopilot kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't have any answers to that specifically. Um, I would love, the video stuff would be exciting, but also that's like a lot of production and a lot of work <laughs> for YouTube or whatever, so... So I don't know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure what or how it should be done, but I think answering the question first of what platforms are the most important and what specifically is the goal that you're trying to achieve there. Is it engagement? Is it just to have a presence? Is it like I see further down on the, on the, on the section to highlight things in the community, which gets difficult because then it's speaking from the mouth of the Node.js, which is unless the whole organization can agree on what things it wants to highlight, <laughs> Maybe it could, it gets dicey to, you know, that one social media chair would, it, no, somebody would always be upset about something basically. But there could be things that could be agreed upon foundation wide that could then be, you know, promoted or whatever, maybe come from the foundation that are approved or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. And I especially think that maybe a very simple place to start is to just have one Twitter account that's the official foundation account and it tweets incredibly boring but authoritative things that are like yeah. this is the new release this yeah. is when the next conference is this is like how you contact the various people and it's just on the schedule tweeting once or twice a day and then you fill up a queue with fairly safe things <laughs> yeah because twitter's really noisy right now facebook is like you can't even think about who's going to see what you post yep. right like it's you might as well just go shout off the top of a skyscraper. Yeah. Um, and then LinkedIn, I think, like, is also has the same problem that is very, very asynchronous. So my my gut would say start with a boring administrative Twitter account. Yeah. Or like signal boosting the more official things published on the collection. You know, you could set up to post to LinkedIn, to post to Twitter or whatever, the simplest kind of, those can be automated even is my point. Um, but the safer stuff, or it could just say, hey, we posted a thing. But I think smaller volume, more focused would be the mm -hmm. most manageable right now and also would upset the fewest amount of people probably. <laughs> right. It's hard to have an engaging Twitter voice without putting a lot of work into it. Yeah. Unless you want to end up like nihilist army. One of the things that I find that our that the community really likes are like open ended questions. Um, mm. I find that those are the ones that we just get so much engagement for and lots of retweets. And so, what would be I know for like what would be helpful from my perspective is to kind of like understand what people want to know about and and what what some of those questions could be. Um, you know, and that kind of goes back to the potentially the reader survey. Um, that I was kind of, that we kind of outlined, uh, I mean, it's also interconnected, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's just, that's just how it works. Um, started a doc with just questions to ask. Even, even better than that. Sorry to cut y'all off. Keep, if, if we're talking about Twitter, cause that's a super, you know, for this community, it's a super popular platform. The voting? Yeah. The vote? Or votes could be, but even, forget even that, just a hashtag. Just a hashtag and then see what gets the most likes, you know, and then call from that basically and say, 
okay. And you know, you could either retweet other people's questions, which would be super easy. You could just get one person logged in, yeah. you know, even still then it's kind of difficult to, you know, somebody has to make that decision. But if you go by like, here's the hashtag to ask questions and then the Node.js account will either phrase them in its own voice because it could look at the aggregate and kind of distill it, or it could be as simple as just a human retweeting ones that are good. But even that, actually, let's not do that because you don't know who you're retweeting. That could get messy. Yeah, but, that, if, <laughs> but if you just have a hashtag where people can ask the questions, then it's already on the platform. It's already people that are going to see it and be engaged. Um, and you know, you could take the aggregate and take the individual out of it, but just see what the themes are. Or I don't know, if it's a really specific question and they're a known community member, then it would probably be safer to credit them. But um, retweeting is often seen as endorsement. So it's, you know. Yeah, it can go through. Yeah. But we could, yeah, we could do like AMA node. Yeah, AMA node, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it could even, you could even, and then the node account could jump into 100 days of code or girls code or yeah. like a bunch of the really cool community hashtags and just go, you know, like, hey, we're doing AMA, blah, blah, blah. Like, ask yeah. us questions and, you know, just signal boost or jump into that stream of crazy content that's always happening. So Great. I'm lazy, like I said, very. I think one, one, <laughs> Of all, all of these, this is to uh, adopt, adopt what's going on in the community on in the current days. Like, if it what's the new conference going on? What's the new event is going on? What's happening within this this week or this month? And we can boost the content and the quality of social media yeah. posts through that. Like, if it's October first, the going on, if it's 100 days of code, or if it's um, similar topic, uh, uh, yeah. And also we, we talked a bit about incentive and there's so much power behind the Node.js brand. There's so much reach, so much. And so there's questions that I would love to pick the Node.js community's brain about. And so that's why I would tweet a thing, which would be like, how are you guys using streams? Do any, does anyone understand streams? You know, like that's yeah. a question I would love to see the community at large go, you know, decide whatever they're going to say about it. I'd follow that thread. So. That's exciting to me, just as a as a consumer, basically. But I, I, what what uh, um, could go wrong about about being specific about some technical detail is that then there would be some folks who don't be, who, who who get messy and who get arguments. really picky about the, some specific point. That yeah, what you guys are, you guys are not going to fix the issue in the streams. I'm like yeah, so. So that, that comes down also, yeah. that comes down to voice in my opinion, and with the voice and character that we tweet those things from yeah. would be uplifting, positive, and inspirational. That would you know just words you could throw on a you know word cloud or whatever. But there's like code newbies. It's a big community. They do a lot of stuff where it's just like, what are you working on, you know? Right. Or um, What's your favorite snack? yeah, or what was the last <laughs> time you failed? Or you know like tell me a story about you failing or you know something that's at least has a, a whiff of upliftingness. Oh, share your last error message is always fun. That I yeah. haven't heard of that. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. No EA, no address. Yeah. And that I feel like that builds community because you get to discover other people in that thread and it's around a shared interest and experience. So there's also I don't know if you all follow the developer swearing Twitter account. No. It's a bot that just quotes get commit messages that include profanity. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, yeah, your last your last commit message is a good one too. But <laughs> okay, so yeah, that, that that thing. Or maybe after all all doing all these things, um, Rachel, I don't know. Maybe you, at this point, maybe we, we don't need a social media chairperson. Uh, may, I don't know. Maybe you can uh, handle. Uh, maybe we can focus more uh, about quality and type of the content than just just throwing stuff. Tierney would be good at it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Just just thinking, just it came into mind that maybe uh, maybe we don't need more content. We need more quality and more specific and some theme content kind of thing. More yeah. curation. Yeah, more curation. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, no, I I I definitely I definitely agree with that. I think the idea of of bringing in a social chair was to kind of. Um, help guide some of that as well. Someone who's more embedded with the community, but I, you know, you know, but I do see, um, I, I, I do see, I, I, I wrote down all of those questions. They were really super funny. And I do see an opportunity to, um, to just do some different things. So this has just been eye opening for me. So I do appreciate that. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that that's I agree with your point. Yeah, everyone here is super happy. So that yeah, yeah <laughs> social media chair could it's not just about yeah getting the content. Uh, a, a specific person from North community can also help you guys uh, or the uh, the one managing the social um, community channels to like what kind of questions would be good, what which things the community likes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it would be good if, if that person is a deaf person who knows a bit about uh, the, the things we have. I, I, it sounds like, it, I, and I'm assuming, but what might be an ideal workflow for y'all is like a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of topics that somebody or the community has already vetted or, you know, whatever. It's, it's like that way you can, you can worry about just scheduling and getting them out there. Yeah. And, you know, like you can asynchronously do the work or someone else can asynchronously do the work where they're like, here's three years, a month's worth of this or right. three months worth of these questions, like one or two tweets a day or something like that. Um, cause yeah. then cause obviously somebody would need somebody who knows the community would need to really select that stuff. Um, but then, yeah, definitely, you know, maybe that would be the social media chair perhaps. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because one of the things, one of, one of the things to, to your point, one of the things that I find helpful, is um, you know obviously I've got I've got Twitter on my phone um, and I'll get a, a direct message saying this is a really interesting tweet or this is a really cool kudos or whatever so that's something that like oh, okay I'm gonna retweet this or like this or or something um, and and nine it's it, ten out of ten times they're always great recommendations um, and so just things like that that kind of help um, you know people who are sort of in it. Um, a little bit, you know, not to say that I'm not, but there, you know, there are people who are coding all day and they're, you know, they're just, they're, you're at the summit. Um, things like that are just helpful um, just to kind of, and it, you know, kind of helps guide other things that I'm looking for that, that the community will find helpful. So some and I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you. I, I interrupted someone. I'm sorry. No, that makes a lot of sense. The only other thing that I would add is that it's often good to have somebody who's on call just because you know, let's say, heaven forbid, the queen passes away. You don't want, like, your tweet to be in the stream. Right. Like, when, when big, terrible things happen, I feel like brands need to turn off their Twitter feeds for a while. Yeah. yeah. They want to have a bunch of, like... You don't know, want to make an ill-timed joke. Yeah, yes. you want to have a bunch of weirdly chipper tweets when there's some huge tragedy yeah. in the world. Uh, like, yeah. if, if there's a, ter if there's a, a terrorist attack in a, a city where a conference is happening, you're like, y'all having a good time and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. 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 So that, that's, that sounds like a compelling reason to have um, some kind of social media chair who just has their thumb on the pulse. I mean, it, um, tyranny is probably too busy, but, like, that's the, per that's the, the spirit of somebody who's in the community, connected knows how twitter works good you know and is like able to they're, they're in the middle of those things where they could curate it and even if it just means filling up your inbox but that's just me being lazy again so but it's nice to have a couple people so people can go on vacation and feel like <laughs> yeah that's there, a really like, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> or maybe those are the people who got i don't think who got affected by the by the thing actually and they yeah yeah right, yeah <laughs> You can't turn off the tweets about because there's been a hurricane. Yeah, the city where the hurricane there you happened. are. Yeah. <laughs> what were you trying to say, Manuel? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, I feel safe. Feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a weird way to put it? Dead man switch. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or having, you know, having several, some methods, some somewhere out there where there's a couple of trusted people who have the login or something. Right, because you don't want the bus factor yeah. of the Twitter account to be one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep, the bus factor. I like that. Somebody gets hit by a bus, right? <laughs> so yeah, the the one uh, last point was idea was to manage the Twitter or account through the GitHub so that uh, once like you, you can log in, I think into uh, Twitter through GitHub profile and you get the access, but then you know what the person who is um, who is sub uh, submitting some posts. Uh, who's who's the person behind? Oh, cool. But yeah, I haven't seen this, but it, uh, this idea was shared in an in another talk. Let me see if I can. Um, just okay. so you'll know, uh, at six the dinner was also starting. So. Oh, Ooh, now. it's six now. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Thank now. you. I, yeah, I just thought I mentioned so. Rad.
back in the day. So that's at Merica. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm actually going to go yeah. to the restroom real quick. Okay. I just this has been fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you want to walk so, on the uh, I think, Rachel, I think we're good for now. Okay. Because, yeah, we are almost over 10 minutes. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been a good conversation. Yeah, it was really good. I collected so many uh, things get taken the notes. We can, we can continue the uh, uh, talk. We can set up a one on one meeting later. Yes, that that sounds good. I think um, I think what also what I'll do is take these notes and, and maybe synthesize them into just like a recap of what you know what we discussed and throw, maybe put together some initial recommendations based on this. Yeah. Um, but it it was super awesome. Um, I really appreciate you know you you getting this together. Um, and I you know I think we'll get some really uh, I think I think the next steps will be really really positive for us. Yeah. Okay. So great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.